Welcome back, everyone. So today is basically our last uh, session, our last uh, series of presentations, and we're going to look at the future of global markets. Now, to do so, we will look at three main topics together. So we'll look at the political, economic, and financial challenges that are facing the EU as a single market. Then we'll look at the effects of anti-money laundering and uh, know your customer regulations on the banking sector. Finally, we'll look at some of the new trends in financial markets. So let's start with the very first topic on our agenda for today. So what are some of the political, economic and financial challenges that are facing the EU as a single market? As we saw last week, the UK is one of the countries that are departing and withdrawing from the EU. The UK is basically not the only country that is withdrawing from the EU. There is a threat that other states, other EU member states might be in line to also withdraw from the, from the agreement, from the single market. And because of this, the withdrawal of particular countries and the expulsion of other member states are one of the main challenges that are facing the EU as a single market. Another challenge that, are faced, that is faced by the EU is basically political instabilities and, of course, the rising in populistic movements in, within the EU. And another major challenge that is faced by the EU is COVID-19's effects and impact on the economy. And finally, labor shortages is one of the strongest challenges that is facing the EU as a single market. Now, if we want to move on from the EU and from what kind of challenges that the single market, the, the European single market may be experiencing within the next few years, into understanding what are some of the challenges that are associated with apl applying uh, the anti-money laundering and know your customer regulations within the banking industry. Basically, here that we would look at a few main themes. One of these main themes is the costs associated with implementing and with complying with the regulatory requirements. Of course, whenever there is a regulatory requirement, specifically when it comes to anti-money laundering regulations and to know your customers, know your customer regulations, there are always they may be costly on the banking sector, they may be costly on financial institutions. And because of that, applying these and implementing these and ensuring that they are that these institutions are basically in line with the uh, updated uh, regulations, this may come at a hefty cost for the banking and for the uh, financial institutions. And so if they would to do, they would have to invest heavily in ensuring that they comply fully with these with these regulations. Another hurdle or perhaps another effect is that looking at that applying or complying with KYC and AML regulations could how it could impact the, the banking sector is basically by looking at some of these measures and most and sometimes these measures would have a negative impact on those who come from a lower income uh, backgrounds. And so complying, as a, from a financial institution perspective, complying with these measures may restrict uh, sometimes access to financial services by these uh, segments of the society. Now, the other impact or effect of uh, AML and KYC regulations on the financial institutions in general and on the banking sector in particular is that because of its application and because of perhaps sometimes the, the hurdles in applying it and in complying with these regulations, financial institutions become more driven to innovate and to find different ways to streamline the process of complying with these uh, regulations and at the same time to make it easier to comply uh, with, with the regulations, with the new regulation. And so here, this is one of the perhaps positive impacts on the banking sector, that it helps them become more innovative in how they find ways to streamline and to comply with the new regulations. Now, if we want to look at some of the trends in financial markets, of course, 
the main theme throughout the few, the past few years was looking at blockchain technology and at crypto assets and cryptocurrencies in general. And for us, for some of you who do not necessarily know what cryptocurrencies are, basically these are digital currencies where all the transactions that are taking place, they are verified on particular records. And these records are maintained on a decentralized system. This de decentralized system is basically the blockchain. And these cryptocurrencies, basically, they, they are now more or less a speculative asset. And because of their rise and their because of their rise and because of the mass adoption of of investing in cryptocurrencies or in buying into cryptocurrencies this drove uh, a number of central banks to think about issuing their own versions of cryptocurrencies of course these central bank backed cryptocurrencies are going to have a little different features from what cryptocurrencies, what traditional cryptocurrencies that we know of Bitcoin are. And so one of the main things or one of the main trends that we'll be looking into is basically cryptocurrencies in general. The other one is basically crypto assets as well. And this is perhaps something that we can discuss together at the end of the presentation and see what are your thoughts about crypto assets. Another main trend that we're observing today is the rise in Islamic finance and Post-2008 crisis, when we started looking for more sustainable ways of doing finance, this has led to the emergence of Islamic financing on an international platform. And one of the basics of Islamic finances, Islamic financing is basically the emphasis on sharing risks and at the same time, the fact that the investments are based on real assets rather than speculative assets. And another pillar associated to it is basically the promotion of social justice and financial inclusion to all members of the society. And this has perhaps driven the, finance, the um, Islamic finance in general to hedge some of the negative impacts of the 2008 crisis and perhaps led to the increased interest in, in Islamic financing post the 2008 uh, financial crisis. With this in mind, let us look into something. I would like for you to do a little bit of research and look at a new trend, an emerging trend in, financial, in the financial sector. And what I would like for you to do is look at crypto assets in general. And in particular, examine non-fungible tokens. Do some research and find out if you think NFTs are able to disrupt financial markets or not. If so, how do you think they're able to disrupt the financial markets? If not, why do you think they are unable to disrupt the financial markets? And do you think there is a point in time that these non-fungible tokens or these kinds of crypto assets are able to disrupt the financial markets? Thank you very much for attending and I wish you all the best of luck.